Okay, good evening. Welcome to Math for Kids number... 65. 65. This is the third in a series of videos about solving Pell's equation, and we're talking about continued fractions for square roots. So if you want to go back to the beginning, it's Math for Kids number 63. You yep. said that in the last video. Yeah, well, somebody might be watching this video hasn't seen the last video yet. Math for Kids number 64, we did the continued fraction for the square root of 2 yesterday. Today we're going to do the continued fraction for the square root of 3. And you remember our procedure for finding continued fractions for square roots? No, I keep forgetting. Split. A split, flip, rat. Split, flip, and rat. Oops. I always forget what number comes after 2. <laughs> 3. <laughs> 3. Oh, hey, square root of 3. Okay. And then rat. So first we split into some integer that we know. <coughs> So we have to investigate what the square root of 3 equals. Then we flip, and then we rationalize. And yesterday that was pretty easy, right? Yeah. Today it's going to be a teeny tiny little bit harder. You excited? Yeah. All right, let's go. Bam! High five. You seem like you're a little not, not so enthusiastic. Mm. Are you ready? Yes. What? Can't hear you? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, so here we go. The square root of 3. Hmm. What do we know about the square root of 3? Well, we know that 1 squared is 1, and we know that 2 squared is equal to 4. Four. So we know that the square root of 3 is somewhere in between 1 and 2, because the square root of 3 squared equals? Equals 3. 3. That is right. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so we know that 1 is less than the square root of 3. We know that 2 is bigger than the square root of 3. So when we're going to do our first split, we're going to say the square root of 3 equals 1 plus the square root of 3 minus 1. Okay? Yes. And remember, we're trying to get this in the form of a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d plus 1 over dot dot dot. So it looks like our first number is 1. Okay, that's our split. Split, flip, and add. What do we do next? Flip. Okay, we write 1 over, we write, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> we write the square root of 3 minus 1, this thing here, equals 1 over, 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1. Well, this is just the square root of 3 minus 1, yeah. Well, this is equal to 1 over 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1, right? And it flips upside down. So we're flipping it. We're, we're unsimplifying. You got a word for that. What? Flip. What was your word? You used to call unsimplifying something funny. Complifying. Complifying. Yes, we're complifying this. Very good. <laughs> we're complifying. Okay, now we have to rationalize. And remember what we did yesterday? We multiplied both sides. We multiplied the top and bottom by the square root of 3 plus 1 over the square root of 3 plus 1. Okay? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. You excited? Mm -hmm. Bam! Okay, so here we go. So first thing we have to do is we have to multiply the bottom, which is the square root of 3 minus 1 times the square root of 3 plus 1. Okay, so we have to multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is? 3. 3. We have to multiply the square root of 3 times 1, which it is? Square root of 3. Square root of 3. 3 plus the square root of 3. Oops, your mother seems to be running out of ink. Okay, now we have to multiply negative 1 times the square root of 3. Ooh, what's that? Negative square root of 3. Negative square root of 3. And then we have to multiply negative 1 by 1, and we get? Negative 1. Negative 1. Awesome. So this is 3 plus square root of 3 minus square root of 3 minus 1, and that is? 2. 2. Awesome. So, for our fraction that we got down here, the bottom is now 2, and the top... The square root of 3 minus 1 equals a half. Well, hold on a second. The square root of 3 minus 1 times the square root of 3 plus 1 That's is 2. The bottom's 2, and the top is the square root of 3 plus 1. So this is 1 over the square root of 3 plus 1, all over 2. Okay? So, our top becomes, we just showed that the square root of 3 minus 1 equals 1 over the square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so our top becomes 
1 over the square root of 3 plus 1, whole thing divided by 2. Okay? So we split, we flipped, and we ratted. We ratted. So now we have to go back to the beginning. The split part. Okay? Now this gets complicated. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so this is why we started with the square root of 2, which was easy. The square root of 3, this is a little harder. So remember that 1 is less than the square root of 3 is less than 2. We talked about that before. So now we have the square root of 3 plus 1. Okay? So you add 1 to each. So we add 1 to each. Two is less than the square root of three plus one, which is less than three. Okay. Now, now we have to divide by two. Square root of three plus one divided by two. Oh, interesting. Now we have to divide all this by two. So we get one is less than the square root of three plus one over two, which is less than three halves, which is one and a half. Okay. All right. So now we split it, and we write this as. 1 plus the square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 minus 1. Okay? Yeah. Does that make sense? See how yeah. the 1's cancel? Okay, so now we have exactly what we want. We have another number. So what do we have to do to this? We have to flip. Flip it. Don't skip it. Okay? Square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 minus 1. The first thing we want to do before we flip it is simplify. Okay? So let's make this minus 1 equal to a minus 2 over 2, so we can combine them. So we get square root of 3 plus 1 minus 2 divided by 2. And what is that equal to? Square root of 3. Plus 1 minus 2. Minus 1. Minus 1 over 2. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So we get, we get 1 over 1 plus the square root of 3 minus 1 whole thing divided by 2. Okay? Now, this is cool. We have to do the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 equals 1 over 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. Wow. Okay? All right? That's our flip. Yeah, but there's the square root of 2. <laughs> That's why I said it gets complicated. 1 over 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. So what happens to this 2 on the bottom? It be This fraction, this is 1 over 1 over a fraction. So 1 over a fraction flips, so this 2 on the bottom actually flips up to here. Right? Yeah. Okay. And it can flip again. Well, it can flip again, but then we would be back to where we were before. And we don't want to be back to where we were before. We want to Keep complify it. So we need to rationalize. Now remember, split, flip, wrap. So we have to figure out what 2 divided by the square root of 3 minus 1 is. And we multiply by the square root of 3 plus 1 over the square root of 3 plus 1, just like we did before. You always, whatever it's minus, you always take the plus of that. So, square root of 3 minus 1 times square root of 3 plus 1, we actually already did. Do you remember what this equals? It's the square, I don't remember. Okay, well let's do it slowly. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is? 3. Square root of 3 times 1 is? Square root of 3. Minus 1 times the square root of 3 is? Minus square root of 3. Minus 1 times plus 1? Minus 1. So this, this whole thing equals? Equals 2. So the bottom of this fraction is 2. And the top of the fraction is the square root of 3 plus 1. Okay? So we get 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1, whole thing divided by 2. What do you think we can do now? Now we can split it again. Well, even before we split it. We 2 times that. something divided by 2. 2's, can 2's. 2's cancel. So this whole thing, 2 over the square root of 3 minus 1, equals the square root of 3 plus 1. But wait a minute. We know about the square root of 3 plus 1 because we started with the square root of 3 and that was equal to a 1 plus something. So the square root of 3 plus 1, remember 1 is less than the square root of 3, which is less than 2. So it's, it's, it's between 2 and 2. 2 is less than the square root of 3 plus 1, which is less than 2. So we can write this as 2 plus 
the square root of 3. Then what? Minus 1. Minus 1. Okay, because remember, we had the square root of 3 plus 1. Oh. And so the square root of 3 equals 1 plus the square root of 3 minus 1 plus 1. So that's where this 2 comes from. Okay? But we already did everything. We're back to where we started. We're going in a circle. Yeah, so we know what this is going to equal when we flip it. And we're going to get a fraction that starts repeating now. Because we already had the square root of 3 minus 1. We're going to write this as 1 over 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1. We're back to where we started. We're back to where we started. We flipped this over. And do you remember what it was? It was the square root of 3 plus, plus 1 over 2. And this was... 1 plus the square root of 3 minus 1 over 2, which was, you see the pattern now? It goes 1, 2, 1, and then we're going to get a 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 all the way down. So that our, our, our digits. digits go 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and that equals the square root of 3. Now we can, let's put it into our continued fraction machine. Now we're going to put that into our continued fraction machine and see what we get. So we get, hold on a second, we get 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. I think we need to put some lines. Okay, now we go into our continued fraction machine. 1 times 1 plus 0 is? 1. 1 times 0 plus 1 is? 1. 1 times 1 plus 1 is? 2. 1 times 1 plus 0 is? 1. 2. 2 times 2 plus 1 is? It's 5. 2 times 1 plus 1 is? It's 3. 1 times 5 plus 2 is? S s seven. Right. Good job. Seven times 1 three. times 3 plus 1 is? 4. 2 times 7 plus 5 is? 14 plus 4 is going to be 19. 19. 1 times 4 plus 3 is? 2, two times 4. Two, sorry, 2 times 4 plus 3 is? 11. 11. 1 times 19 plus 1 is? 7. 1 times 19 plus 7 is? 26. 26. 1 times 11 plus 4 is? 15. 15. And we'll just stop at this next one. 2 times 26 plus 19. Well, it's going to be 40 plus 12. It's going to be 52 plus 19. Which is? 71. 71. And 2 times 15 plus 11? 30, 41. 41. Now, these are going to be interesting approximations to the square root of 3. So let's see if they're any good. We already looked at 1 and 2. Let's look at 5 thirds. So 5 thirds approximately equals the square root of 3. That's what this tells us. So let's square both sides and see if we get something that's about equal to 3. 5 squared is? 25. 25 divided by 9. Is, is this about equal to 3? Is this about equal to 3? 25 nines? 25 nines? Well, 20, 20, yeah, it is. 27 nines. 27 nines would be definitely 3. Okay, so that's close. Let's see if we can get something better. So this is 3 minus 2 nines. Very close to 3. Let's jump ahead to 71 over 40. No, no, no. Let's do 7 fourths. Goodness sake. 7 fourth. Does this about equal the square root of 3? Well, 7 squared is? 49. 49. And 4 squared is? 16. 16. So does this about equal 3? Well, what's 16 times 3? 16 times 3 is 30 plus 18. It's 48. So that, that's a better approximation. It's a better approximation. This is actually 3... This equals 3 plus 1 16th. So that's a pretty good approximation. An awesome approximation. It's an awesome approximation. Okay, let's do 19 elevenths. I do not know what 19 squared is. I do know what 11 squared is. Does this about equal the square root of 3? Okay, well, 19 squared, I'll tell you, is 361. Okay? Okay. Oh, and 11 squared is 121. So does this about equal 3? Well, what's 121 times 3? It's, it's 363. 363. Awesome so this is 3 minus 2 over 121. That's a pretty good approximation. Okay, we'll do one last one. We'll do 26 over 15. I have no idea what the squares are. 
26 over 15. Does this approximately equal the square root of 3? Hmm. Well, do you know what 26 squared is? No. No? I can tell you if you want, but let's calculate it. 26 times 26. Well, first you do 20 times 26 and 26 times 6. Okay? 20 times 26 is what? 20 times 20 is 400 plus 120. So it's going to be 520. 520. And 26 times 6 is? Uh, 120 plus 36, 156. Yeah, so we've got to add 156 here. And what do you get? 676. Okay, so we get 6, 7, 6, 15 squared is 225. Does this about equal 3? Well, what's 225 times 3? It's 675. Awesome approximation! All right, so 26 over 15 is very close to the square root of 3. And you can keep going with this. You could keep going much further. And you'll get better and better and better approximations to the square root of 3. But you'll never be equal to the square root of the thing. But one thing I want to show you is that what this says is that 26 squared minus 3 times 15 squared equals 1. And the whole thing we're going to be talking about this week is our equations like this. x squared minus something times y squared equals 1. Well. So this shows how you can go about solving them and getting solutions. You would have never known if I would have just written down x squared minus 3 times y squared equals 1. It may have been hard to figure out some solutions, but it turns out that 26 squared minus 3 times 15 squared equals 1. And we got that just from this continued fraction. Awesome! Okay, good job today, honey. Hopefully we stayed under 17 minutes or 15 minutes.